Hi everyone. So today we have a really nice and short question on the greatest integer function equation. So here we're going to see an equation, like a quadratic equation, but just that instead of maybe x squared and x, what we're used to seeing in equations in algebra, we'll have a term from the greatest integer function. And these questions are relatively easy to deal with. So whenever you see greatest integer function, it probably there probably exists a really elegant solution to it. And the method that I'm going to display is fairly standard, it's fairly simple. So yeah, and it only involves certain basic properties of the greatest integer function. So yeah, let's see how that goes. So this is the problem number one from the Canadian National Math Olympiad in the year 1999. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the greatest integer function, which also got the floor function as properties. And then of course, you're going to be solving an equation that's based on the floor function. After that, we have some books such as the National Math Olympiads, and at the end, a similar but chanting problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in Mathematical Olympiads, Physics Olympiads, Computer Science and Informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we need to find all real numbers x that satisfy this given equation. Now, this term over here is what we call the greatest integer function of x, also called as the floor of x. Now, as we've talked about in previous videos, the floor of x is nothing but the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So, floor of 2.3 is 2. Floor of 7.9 is 7, right? Floor of, let's say, 3 is obviously 3. Floor of 10.1 is 10.1. It's 10, sorry. Similarly, the floor of, let's say, negative 1 is negative 1 right similarly the floor of negative 2.3 will be negative 3 right? so this is the greatest integer less than or equal to x and really because of its definition what is it is the greatest integer less than or equal to x so it is less than or equal to x it can be equal to x like we saw over here greatest integer function of 3 is 3 and has to be greater than x minus 1 right so this is the most important property probably that we will be needing for this question. And in fact, is the only property that we'll be needing for this question. Because you see, in the question, they've given us 4x squared negative 40 times the floor of x plus 51 is equal to 0. And we know that the floor of x satisfies this given inequality. Right? So maybe let's just multiply by 40 on both sides. So you'll get 40x minus 40 minus 40 times the floor of x is less than or equal to 40x. Okay, great. Now, because we have a negative over here in the second term, let's multiply this by negative. And the, the thing to note is that whenever you swap an inequality by negative, it, it, it changes its sign. So, for example, we know that 3 is greater than 2. But if I multiply this on both sides by negative 1, I know that negative 3 is smaller than negative 2. Right? So, the sign of the inequality changes, essentially. So if I multiply this by negative 1, this becomes greater than or equal to negative 40x and this becomes less than 40 minus 40x. It becomes something like this. And after that, we just need to add these other things, 4x squared plus 51. So add 4x squared plus 51 on both sides. And once I do that, I'll, uh, I, I, I'll get to see that the given equation 4x squared negative 40 times the floor of x plus 51 this lies between 4x squared negative 40x plus 51 and 4x squared negative 40x plus 91 and it's given to the question that this is zero right over here we can see that this quantity is zero okay great so now we have like an algebraic question so 4x squared negative 40x plus 51 is less than or equal to 0, which is less than 4x squared negative 40x plus 91. And this now that we've essentially transformed it, right? Initially, we had that floor thing in the question, but we essentially proceeded to remove that. So now we can just deal with uh, these algebraic things over here. So we have two inequalities, right? The first one is this and the second one is this. And all we need to do is solve them separately and take the intersection of whatever values of x we get. So let's maybe just solve them. So the first inequality is 4x squared negative 40x plus 51. That is less than or equal to 0. And it's going to be very easily factorized as x minus 17 by 2 times x minus 3 by 2. 
you can figure out the roots of this via quadratic formula. And because this is less than or equal to zero, so therefore by wavy curve method, we know that x must belong to 3 by 2 to 17 by 2 with the closed interval. Okay. So, and the second inequality is 4x squared negative 40x plus 91 is greater than zero. And again, this can also be factorized as x minus 7 by 2 times x minus 13 by 2 is greater than zero. So again, just by using the wavy curve, we know that x belongs to negative infinity to 7 by 2 union 13 by 2 to infinity. And over here, we have the open interval. Okay, great. Now, now that we've kind of like established these things, we've established certain values that x can take, we need to take the intersection of both these values. So whatever we received over here and over here, we need to take the intersection of this two and three. So maybe let's just plot them on the number line and see what, what the range of values it's intersecting. So let me just plot the numbers. We have three by two, we have seven by two, we have 13 by two, and we have 17 by two. So equation number two says that X lies between three by two and 17 by two. So it lies somewhere over here, right? Okay, great. And equation number three says that it lies between negative infinity to negative seven by two and 13 by two to infinity. So therefore you take the common region and what will be the common region? This will be the common region, right? And this will be the common region. So therefore X belongs to 3 by 2 to 7 by 2 union 13 by 2 to 17 by 2. There we go. So what do we notice? So we notice that X can be anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5 union 6.5 to 8.5. So therefore the greatest integer function of X can either be 1, 2 or 3 from this first interval and from the second interval it can also be 6, 7 and 8. So really we split up this question into certain number of finite cases, right? So we had 4x squared minus 40 times the floor of x plus 51 is equal to zero. And now we just have to analyze these six cases one by one and then figure out it using the quadratic formula. So case one is obviously when greatest integer of x is one and you get no solution. After that, we have greatest integer of x is two. You get x is equal to root 29 by two, which is a valid solution. You also get like minus root 29 by two cause it's a quadratic. However, I'm excluding that cause negatives are not in our range of values of x. So x cannot be negative. So if you ever see x is less than zero, you can immediately reject that. Okay, so the third would be when the floor of x is equal to three. Here you get x equal to root 69 by 2 and correspondingly minus root 69 by 2. However, root 69 by 2 does not fall in the range of values of x that we need over here. It's something 4 point something and 4 point something is clearly out of the interval. Next, we move on to greatest integer function of x will be 6. You get x equals to root 189 by 2, which is a valid solution. Then you move on to greatest integer of x is 7. You'll get x equals to root 229 by 2 which is again a valid solution. And lastly, we get floor of x equal to eight, which corresponds to x equal to root 269 by two, which is again a valid solution. So we have indeed four solutions, right? Four solutions, which are root 29 by two, root 189 by two, root 229 by two, and the fourth one is root 269 by two. So yes, that was a pretty standard technique of solving questions of this type. And yeah, you learned a new problem solving technique. Okay, so moving on, we've sent book sessions for National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number Theory by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur Rangel, Functional Equation by Venkata Chala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharigan, Elementary Number Theory by Siapinski, Graph Theory by Harari, and of course, Combinatrix by Brualdi. Okay, so we have here a similar but challenging problem. And this is again, an equation involving the floor function, right? So we need to solve for all real numbers. Two by x is equal to one by floor x plus one by two times the floor of x, or the floor of two x. I'm sorry, floor of two x. So yeah, maybe give this a go and see if you're able to solve this. And if you do, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye bye. Sinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. 
and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.